Hello everyone and welcome to lesson 34. Today we're going to be talking about exceptions. We're going to be learning how to try, catch, and throw exceptions. So that brings us to the topic, what is an exception? Well, sometimes we know there's going to be errors that occur and we can't prevent them. For instance, let's say our program communicates with a database over a network. If that uh, network goes down, you know, that could cause a lot of problems for our program. That's an exception. And the way you fix exceptions are you put them in a try and catch block. And for, for, um, for our, I'll just go ahead and write this here. It'll make a little more sense. So try, then we have this here. We just have some code and then catch. Then we have some code. Okay, so that's, that's essentially what we do. All we need to do is if this is the code that is connecting to the database, put it in here. And if an exception is raised um, or thrown, um, and thrown and raised are pretty much synonymous, we catch it. And what we do here is we could say, you know, just say, for instance, if it was a database, we could try to reconnect or, or, or do whatever, or just let the user know, you know what, the database is down, try again another time, you know, whatever. So that's ultimately the gist of it. If you have some type of code that could throw an exception, something that we can't prevent, we put it in a try uh, block, and then we catch that exception and try to resolve it, or at least let the user know what the problem is. So let's go ahead and get started. I created an error class. Um, we don't have to worry about this for now. And uh, this is actually going to be a more difficult lesson, so try to, try to follow with me. It'll be, be longer, probably be about eight minutes, I'm guessing. But anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll go down to here. So first what we do is we just create uh, a new objective type error class and then we just start it. So in start it'll say entering method one, right? So we're in one level deep and then uh, we call method, method one and then we say entered method one. Now you'll see here I've added that try block. I know there's going to be an error here. I'm just pretending like a user can enter in zero and we could divide by zero. Obviously you can't do that so that'll raise an exception. And that exception you know is common so it's actually built in. Uh, it's a built-in uh, exception. So um, we have you know the dividend, the divisor, the quotient. We try to divide by zero. It's going to cause an error. Um, if we, let's see here, I'm going to go ahead and just do this real fast. Okay. Um, uh, well, I guess I need the, tr the catch. Uh, well, anyways, if we did not have, well, I can just do this. Okay, so we'll run this, and we're going to get this. Um, you know, if we don't have a try and a catch block, this is what the user is going to see. Lots of stuff. So, and you can see we entering method one, entered method one, we tried to divide by zero and it crashed our program. That's obviously not a good thing. So let's go ahead and remove this. We'll fix our try block. Okay. All right, so now we have everything in this try block. So if an exception is raised, which, you know, this is going to be a divide by zero exception, um, we catch it. And divide by zero is actually an arithmetic exception. So it'll, it'll go to our first catch block, see if this, it's of this type exception. If it is not, then it'll go to our second one, and we just created a generic one. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So you'll see we have a different, uh, a different message. Entering method one, entered method one. You know, we have this exception handler thing. Um, arithmetic exception handler. And then, you know, I basically just do E to string. And E is just simply a system.exception object. Um, and, that, and then there's our stack trace. So we can actually see where the error is occurring. So um, uh, in method one. So if we look at method one, that's obviously where it's occurring. So that's nice. But you may not want to show the user that. So let's say we don't want to show the user that. We could actually just do this. Um, and access the message property. And the message property is the actual error. So arithmetic expression handler attempted to divide by zero. You know, we could even make it 
even prettier, whatever, or easier to understand if this was a production program. Obviously, we, if it was, we'd want to fix this, but attempted to divide by zero, and that's using the uh, message property. So, now that we've got that down, um, we know that that was um, thrown or raised automatically because, you know, that's a problem. We know that we can't divide by zero. So what we, we can also do is just say our program for some reason can't have the dividend as 1337. So what I've done is for our class is I've created an, an exception uh, class, which obviously it's very simple. It's just, you know, we're deriving from system exception. We're just creating a subclass. Pretty simple stuff. And then we're just calling base message. So we're just going to display the message. Okay, so now when we go down here, we say if dividend equals 1337, and I better change that to 1. Um, if, if dividend uh, equals 1337, create a new uh, leet exception, and then we, can we can't actually set the message because it's, it's read only and that's dictated by this uh, system exception. Um, so we actually have to pass it into the constructor e.help link, it's a very nice thing to have if, um, you know, you're creating your own exception, you should link, you know, how to resolve the exception. And then throw is, is essentially how we, you know, obviously, th you know, create an exception ourselves. Because, you know, this isn't necessarily a problem for C sharp, you know, it can run fine, it can definitely divide 1337 by 1. If we want to throw our own or raise our own exceptions, we have to do throw and then, you know, throw E. So what this is going to do is it's obviously not an arithmetic uh, exception because this is our own created exception. So it's going to get caught by this generic uh, exception E. And then we're going to get the whole thing to string. So let's go ahead and run this. And then you'll see um, generic exception handler, um, you know, lead exception encountered, right? Lead exception encountered. And if we wanted to, we could just say, um, help link, you know, and this is just for demonstration purposes. And you can actually, you know, if, if someone else was using our class, they could click on this link and say, okay, what, what is this about? And learn more about it. So that's actually, we're almost at eight minutes. So this is how we, uh, you know, basically safeguard our, programs in the real world. Obviously the real world isn't perfect and there's lots of things going on. Hard drives can fill up, networks can go down, all kinds of stuff. And that's what, uh, you know, and why we, we have this, you know, try, catch, and throw stuff. It's so that we can handle exceptions and hopefully, you know, we can actually fix the exception. You know, if it, again, if it's a bad network or something like that, maybe we can reconnect. In worst case scenario, we can at least um, fail what's called gracefully as opposed to having that giant uh, black window and saying your program stopped working or whatever. So anyways, a lot to absorb. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. If you have any questions, please go to our e.help link here and ask in the, uh, the community and hopefully one of our members or myself will be able to answer your question, okay?